Welcome to the Mojo Market Report. Here's your hosts, Dave Sturgio and Chris Gucci. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Mojo Market Report right here on a Thursday. It is Dave Sturgio. It is Chris Gucci, the return of A5 behind the glass here at Chop Studios. Hope everybody's doing well out there. We hope everybody's recovered from the groundbreaking announcement from the beach. Uh, Tom Brady officially retired yesterday. Actually happened on the air. Uh, they did a fantastic job cutting up the reaction because it yeah. was le- legitimate, like genuine reaction to a guy of his stature just yeah, coming it's out. Kind of crazy, dropping that, a video like it's that. It's kind of crazy that they gave Tom Brady his script already. Right. This off season. Right. So I wonder what like he's he got the back. script in his locker and he's like retire. I retire. had like at least two more years yeah. left. Yeah. Um, by the way, that, that is, is those memes are just absolutely. Those gold. are. If you're interested in laughing this morning, please go. First of all, go. Any any, any of, they're all over. Everybody's. But I'm saying, go listen to a, a little bit of the interview from PFT Commenter oh, yes, yes. from Barstool with Arian Foster. Um, this dude's going to spin right off the planet, and it's great. I'm here for it. Um, he literally came out yesterday and said the whole thing is scripted. Get a script in preseason. Um, that they, that's what they practice. You see Marlon Humphrey's tweet? He was like, yeah, when I let Jamar Chase go off for 200, he was like, it was in a script. <laughs> Micah, Parsons, do? Micah Parsons came out and said, man, I'm about to release the whole playoff script on y'all. <laughs> like, it is just, it is great. Uh, so if there is a script out there, I hope next year is the year for the Dallas Cowboys uh, because there is one going around. Uh, with R. Kelly uh, saying that, you know, he's just complaining that it's been 28 years. <laughs> he gives you everything he's got. Uh, but anyway, uh, congratulations to Tom Brady on uh, his um, extravagant career. The guy's, uh, his his stats, his his accolades, his accomplishments, those things will never be touched. Um, his tenure, his length of term and service, I don't think that'll ever be touched. I think it will. That, I think, will, yeah. will happen. Yeah, because... The guy played 23 but years. But he also split his... He split the difference. He play, he played part of his career when you were still somewhat allowed to touch the quarterback very early. And I think the Tom Brady knee injury is what kind of changed a lot of the rules. That's true. In the NFL. But then Matt Castle went out there and won 10 games. And now... Games. 12. Whatever. <clears throat> then what, Missed the playoffs. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Now what you see is these quarterbacks that are just not allowed to be touched their entire career. So we're going to see if there's going to be a guy, if there's going to be a will, there will be a way. At the end of it all, Pat Mahomes could play 35 years. You have no idea. I mean, he did look almost like he was, his career was over at the end of the last one. He was very beat up. Yeah, but I'm, that's but, what I'm saying. Like uh, high ankle sprains, they add up after time. Blah blah blah. You know what I mean? The, for I was Tom Brady, a bunch of things yesterday about Tom Brady's workout, and and he was reaching out to guys like Ichiro. To get a stretching regimen. That's how you have to do it if you really want to play that long. But because it's a, a benchmark now, and because I believe that there is going to be somebody that comes along that wants to challenge what Tom Brady has done, I think that's one that can be done. I think there will be a guy that plays very, very long. I just think you need to be absolutely entrenched and obsessed with the game of football because after the season's over, you got that month lull, and then it's like right back to doing the same I mean, crap. Now that you I'm just thinking did. about it, it's it's the the will is one thing, but you have to have a bunch of organizations, not just one. You have to have a few organizations that are willing to take you on, because right, because it's not, not going to be just one. No, you know, not like anymore. It has to be collective that execs think, okay, this guy could still. I do think it. the times are, have completely changed from way back when, when you know, when when, it, when a, a star player switched teams, you almost like it caught you off guard. You're just like, oh my god, like I can't believe after all these years. And then Brady was the one, the first one to really do it in the modern era. Because he's with one team for 18, 19 years, and the next thing you know, bye-bye, I'm going to go start another career. That's why the whole well, – actually, Brett Favre. When Brett Favre left, I was very taken back yeah. because I'm like, dude, that guy played literally the Iron Man of football. But never got also, hurt. He was also drafted by the Falcons, which is kind of – Yeah, but nobody remembers that. I mean, exactly. people know it, but they don't remember mm-hmm. that. Um, you know, I, I think that the, those times have passed us by. I think that, look, you saw it last year with Russ. Nobody thought Russ would ever leave Seattle. And now you're about to see it with Rodgers more than likely. Like We saw it with Matthew Stafford. Stafford on his way lot. out. Even yeah. Montana, bro. Like Montana back in the day was one big example of all the success that he had. And then he went and finished his career with the, the Kansas City Chiefs. LA but, stayed his whole time. But another one. Well. Wasn't he drafted by the Colts? Um, I think there was a... Like a little bit of a Eli Manning situation there. Where but now, is there any? Do you think we live in an out. era based off money, based off time? Do you think we live in an era where there will ever be somebody that plays a twenty-year career or 15, 15 year career all with one team? Like Romo did it, Eli did it, like guys like How that long did, did it. Romo play? 
Uh, Romo started, he got draft or an undrafted free agent back in 2004 mm-hmm. and played all the way to 16, so 12, 13 years. I mean, there's a chance that Rodgers does it. Rodgers could retire That's this true. Week. Yeah, no, Rodgers could be done this year, and yeah, he can kind I, of follow I do suit. think that quarterback only, though. I mean, maybe some receivers in other positions, too, but mainly the quarterback. I'm just trying mm-hmm. to think out loud of, like, guys that are that have been in the league for a long time. Even, like, defensive it's players. Hard to, it's hard to predict anything about a young player now because how do you know it's going to go down in 15 years? It's too much things at play. There could be a Brady situation where nobody ever thought it would happen, but at the back of the at the end of the day, like it gun to your head, gun to your head right now. More right? players will play for another team than not. Gun like to your head way right now. More. Gun to your head right now. Do you think, like I'll just spitball, spitfire a couple guys, right? Mahomes obviously got locked up for a long time, yeah. and I think towards the back end of that <laughs> deal, there's going to be another deal to finish out his career. He's going to restructure, right? Right? Gonna, right? It's going to happen. Like to. Jalen Hurts, who's Super Bowl quarterback this year. Like, I know it's his second year or third year, but it's like, is no. Jalen Hurts going to wind up a Philadelphia Eagle forever? No. No, right? You would no. think that once that money runs up, maybe a third contract. I don't know. It's interesting. It really it's, is Like I said, it's impossible to, to say now. But There's for Brady so to do it. that play in Yeah, for, but for Brady to do it, it's, you know, he didn't do it either. He left, you know. So, again, accolades that will never be touched. A lot of those records are just because of the compiling and the years and the years and the years. It's just, I don't know. I don't think some of those records will... I know it's an air raid type league now where it's all passing. We'll put it this way. Aaron Rodgers would have to play like six more years right. at this point. And Rodgers has had a lot of yards. And I'm, that's you know? not going to happen. So Not at all. All right. So And Rodgers also sat for three. But Brady sat for like a year and a half. Was it a year and a half? Didn't he go in as like a second year guy? Yeah. So, so that would be a year and a half. Oh, wow. That's math. Um, anyway, let's talk about some of these. Impending free agents that are about to hit the mojo market along with the free agent market. Who's staying? Who's going? There's a lot of guys out there. There's a plethora. ESPN dropped a list of 32 teams and their representative, the one guy to likely either to leave or stay. It's the biggest name on their roster. So what I did, because there was plenty of defensive players, and when it comes to the mojo market, we're only doing offense right now. So I took the top five guys that I thought. There's some notables out there. Um, Top five guys that are on their contract year. Free agency's impending. It's coming. It's there. Will they, won't they stay? We start with a Lamar Jackson. Now, Lamar Jackson had himself, despite the injuries, he had 2,242 yards. You know he's never going to light the scoreboard up passing, right? 764 yards rushing, a total of 20 touchdowns, 17 through the air, three on the ground. Threw seven interceptions, so obviously that's not good, but that's not Dak Prescott bad. Um, Lamar Jackson. There is some rumors now that there there could be some movement with this guy, right? Or do you think the Ravens pony up and get it? Because, look, if you're a Lamar Jackson investor, since he was drafted, he's up 278%. So, clearly, the guys on a trajectory, is it's kind of a nice little stairway. Longer stairway, but a nice little stairway, right? Do you think that this new contract is going to boost this dude's all the way up? Like, because this deal is going to be... Not Kirk Cousins I think, guaranteed. I, I think it's going to be big, big guaranteed. I think Lamar's, as far as the mojo market's concerned, I think Lamar would be better off getting traded or signed to a different team with with some more weapons. If he goes to if he goes back to Baltimore, which I think is the almost ninety nine percent sure thing, you're that's putting going that much percentage happen. on there. Yeah, I mean, a lot has to go into it. You have to have a if to give up a ton to get Lamar because it's going to be it's they're not going to just sign. It's going to be a sign and trade type deal. Right. They're going to work that out where they franchise him and then you have to give up capital and then sign him to a long-term deal. So you're handcuffing your team already. I think the best situation for Lamar would be to get paid by the Ravens, stay there, but for the Mojo market, I'm not I don't want him to be a Raven because their offense stinks. They don't have any weapons for him. So you think if you're an investor in Lamar right now on the market, you're rooting for him to go somewhere else. I'm rooting for him to go somewhere and else. And that's going to be getting the bag as well. So it's not They're, like he's going to get be... paid regardless. But to be honest, I think Lamar stays. The uh, Harbaugh came out and said it's a 99% sure thing. They're going to, is a team really going to give up a first, a second, or two firsts to get Lamar? I don't know. Some people look at and this guy like he's generational. I don't believe it. The Jets are, t- they're talking about the Jets. Does he really make the Jets a much better team? Yeah. Like how long? How long does he make them a good team? As long as they have all their their core in place. Why not? I agree, but do you think the Jets are going to want to give him the guaranteed contract that you were saying the Ravens shouldn't? Woody Johnson has come on record saying he's going to do whatever it takes to get a quarterback that's competent over there to to win. The Jets, if anything right now, the Jets 
Who would you are rather a have very long, good who would you rather have right now for the great Jets? destination. Would you rather have Rodgers or Lamar? For the long term, Lamar. But for like win now next year, Aaron Rodgers. No, I agree. Obviously, I'm playing devil's advocate. I tried to put you in a blender and you didn't fall for it. I don't fall Dave, for those things. Dave did good, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, 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 good. I'm an expert. Because I was pro. trying to get you to say, no, the Jets should give up a ton. I'm like, but you were just saying that, that the Ravens shouldn't and Dave didn't. Didn't budge. You hear that? I'm good at this. Sometimes I'm good, good at this. It's like I've done this before. Um, all right. So that's Lamar. Shifting on over to a running back, I think. Yes. A good running back at that. Saquon Barkley. Now, it's it's an interesting conversation because of the success. Now, look, I'll also preface this by what you're looking at right here on his chart. He's the only person on this five list, on this, the five that I chose, that is down for his career. Okay? Uh-huh. Because of the injuries. Because of things I noticed that, that too. Yeah, he's the only one in the red, right? So he's the only one. Look, now last year, there was plenty of spikes because last year he delivers. 1,312 yards, so a top rusher in football, right? Scores 10 times, a lot of pay dirt. He catches 57 balls out of the backfield, 338 yards, swinging the ball around, right? Saquon Barkley, to me, is going to be an absolute victim of the franchise tag. I don't think there's any other option. Uh, for the Giants, because if they want to sign Daniel Jones as well, giving both of these guys a massive extension probably isn't in the cards. So if you're going to tag anybody, you tag somebody with the cheapest price. That's just business. Yeah, well, again, the same deal with Lamar. I don't think he's going anywhere. They're going to tag him. And if they do, if he does go somewhere, it's going to have to be with a trade. <clears throat> I'm looking at the free agent class for the running backs. Almost every guy we're talking about, all running backs. And that's that's not even the Including tip of the Lamar iceberg. Jackson. <laughs> But then we're talking Miles Sanders. There's a bunch of other guys. Yeah, he's Kareem not. On, he's not on my list. Kareem Hunt. That's not on the list. It, it goes on and on. <laughs> Both the Dolphins running backs. There's a lot going to be a lot of value. So unless it's the Giants, which I do believe it's going to be worked out, Saquon doesn't really have much leverage in terms of getting the 16 million that he was asking for. The Giants offered him about 12. I think they meet in the middle, and it's a it's a solid deal. And I actually I think it's a. Saquon would be lucky to get that. Do you think he'd be a victim of a double franchise tag, which doesn't happen often, but you, you can what, like back to back years? Bell? Because here's the thing: if you if you franchise tag, I'll just give you a number, right? If you franchise tag the running back this year, it's ten seven, right? Next year, I believe it goes up to like fourteen. So if you're looking at it, right, you spent twenty four million dollars, twenty five million dollars. Let's round up. So technically, you get him for two years for twenty five. You're looking at a twelve point five million dollar. A year thing, so the Giants look like bandits. And if he does perform, but if you get you a, resign him. So so what is this year? It's it's only 10, 10, 10, 7. 10. 7 and then what I've read. around probably go up to twelve, right? So twenty two, maybe twenty three million. I'll say and like I said, I rounded up to twenty five. So if they're they're gonna save five million dollars over the course of two years, because even if they sign him to a three or four year deal, they'll most likely be an out after the second year. You would assume. You would assume, yeah. right? Especially with this position. So I don't know. I think it would be a bad move because where you want to go as a team, you're not going to have him in camp. And I know it doesn't really matter when you have a star player, and I'm always on the side of things. <laughs> well, you've dealt with Darren Rodgers being in, in islands instead of training camps. So and then yeah. winning an MVP. I right. watched Le'Veon Bell not show up and then show up Friday practice before week one, and I think he was like either first or second for the rushing title. So when yeah. you're a star player and it's you're doing what you got to do <laughs> – I just think it would be a bad move for the, what the Giants are trying to do. They got trying to gel and come together as like a winning, cohesive unit. Yeah. Get your star players there. You need your leaders there to, to make these things happen. They're not a team that's been back and forth, uh, been in the playoffs for year after year. So they have to create that first. Um, I think they signed Saquon this year. This year? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. I, I, With a I, tag. They might tag him because there's that's going to happen That'll first. buy you time. Yeah. Like, what you have to do is you have to get like your Saquon roster. Is getting franchise tag. That's like. It's conjecture at this point to even talk about Lamar and Saquon because they're both, they're going to both get tagged. They're not actual free agents. How about the NFL leading rusher? Josh Jacobs, as we move on. Josh Jacobs, 1,653 <clears throat> yards. Won the rushing title, right? 12 touchdowns. Catches 53 balls out of the backfield for an even smooth 400. So close to 2,000 all-purpose yards for Josh Jacobs on a Raiders team that clearly regressed. He's an, he's an agent's worst nightmare, Josh Jacobs. Why is that? Because he's like, yeah, I just want to be a Raider. I'll t- you know, whatever. Oh, God. I, the, I If I'm the agent, I'm quitting. I mean, you're not because 
You're going to make money regardless. But I'm get, saying, like, it, it's an easy deal to make. If you, like yeah, you, you went public like that. Oh, my God. Did he really say something like that or say yeah, something I in mean, that realm? I don't have the exact quote, but it was Careful, the don't misquote. The internet will oh, crush I'm, you. I'm already done on this one because <laughs> if, it, if it gets clipped up, don't clip up the Lamar thing. Oh, okay, damn. Because then I'll be like... <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping uh, that would be the no, clip. No, but no, that's not the one. That's not the one. But Jacobs did come out and say he wants to be a Raider. Devontae even said he wants to be a Raider. So he, like, put that to bed where, you know, uh, all the trade rumors with the Derek Carr stuff, Devontae's like, no, I'm here. And Derek Jacob's Carr should a, be a Raider. Jacob's in a different situation. If I was Jacobs, I would have had my locker cleaned out in week 13. And you're like, look, guys, I got to go. Sorry, do you I'm going to keep. Now, do you think a Josh Jacobs rushing title, do you think a guy like that can reset the running back market? I feel like Josh Jacobs is. He's still young. No, no, not at no? all. No? Okay. Mm-mm. I think Jacobs goes to the Raiders. He's the type of guy that's going to go to the Raiders and be like, guys, do you have that franchise tag? Do you need to sign it? Because the Raiders... Leave that in my locker next to the I'm script? not sure their financials, but you know they just gave Devontae a ton of money. And, and they're losing a lot of money with, with the removal of Carr, if that happens. So they got money to spend over there in Las Vegas, not just at the craps table. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I mean, like, Jacobs, Jacobs will probably sign a team-friendly deal long-term and avoid having to be franchised. Oh, man. I feel like that's the just the... Bad move on his behalf. He's a running back. Those guys don't—they don't last. They got to go get your secure your bag right now. And I never used to be. Listen, I, when Zeke signed that contract, I was like, yeah. But then, like two years later, you're like, but, oh. but here's the here's the truth of it: where it's everybody wants a player to be the team friendly guy and just go and do the team deal. And then when when somebody comes along and is like, you know, I'm happy making twelve million this year and twelve million next. And twelve. Yeah, I mean, it's gu- when it's guaranteed and it's all front you know, loaded and all this other stuff. Yeah, of course. Not everybody's the same. I will be after the most money possible. Hundred percent. I'm with you. Um, speaking Jacobs, of most money possible, not. that's the Chicago Bears. They have the most money possible in free agency. They have the most money to spend. And David Montgomery is our next running back and next guy on the list. The ESPN shows Montgomery as the biggest free agent for the Bears. Rightfully so. The guy obviously has. Just 801 yards doesn't break the doesn't break the century mark. Uh, five touchdowns, only 34 catches out of the backfield. This offense went through Justin Fields. You knew damn well you weren't going to have a significant running game when Justin Fields is the one taking golf. Well, they a have lot. a good running game, just not a good running game out of their backs. Right. So it's it's Justin Fields. He's all of a sudden become the Lamar of the world. Can't wait till his contract is up. See what he gets. But I know you don't I think, think you don't even Fields, think Justin Fields is a quarterback right Fields now. Justin Fields may get traded. I would love nothing raw, nothing more for you to be right on that, like just for, for show purposes. Maybe even but. me, no. Maybe even for Lamar. Can't trade Lamar. He's a he doesn't have a contract right now. Franchise tag. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, can you trade a guy with a franchise tag? That just happened. That could definitely happen. Um, it gives you negotiating rights. Yes, it hundred percent does. Hmm. He signs the tag, right? Yeah. You give permission to work out a deal with your agent and another team. Long term, I guess it can happen. Yeah, all and right. And you sign them, and then this way you get compensated. Well, back to Montgomery. The That's the whole point of the franchise tag, really. Can the Bears? Are the Bears going to do this? Considering the fact that they almost have like a hundred mil to spend and ridiculous draft capital, the Bears are in a good spot if you're a team that likes transactions <laughs> because there's going to be plenty for right. The GM went out there said, "We run the North, right? We're going to take over the North." Well, it starts now, and it starts with David Montgomery. So. Is he expendable, or is it like a complete rebuild where they have Khalil Herbert and do their thing there and <clears throat> draft somebody late and all that stuff? I don't think he's going to be that expensive, so it would be probably smart to re-sign him. You get somebody that's consistent, you know that can When you say that expensive, what are we looking at? Ballpark. If we're, if we're looking at what Jacobs is probably going to sign, like 12, 13, Saquon's asking for 14, what do you think Montgomery gets? I'd say under 10. I was going to say 9. 9, 10. I was going to say 9. And it's what he's worth case, right now. I, you know what? I'm not. I'm nobody to tell tell you what guys are worth. But I will tell you that 800 as, yards as doesn't as bang as, on the desk. I, I need all the well, money in the world. I mean, look what he's done over his career, over his rookie deal. Since then, he's he's up 91 percent since draft day in the Mojo market. So clearly, look, he's Mo- Montgomery has been. He's delivered, and I think he's proven that he's a, a good back in this league. Their their system really didn't lend for him to be doing well this no. year. Their offensive line stunk, and every time they ran the ball, it was mostly Justin Fields. So. I'm not going to knock him for that, but when they're when it comes contract time, they will. I don't think he's going to get paid too much. I think he ends up staying a bear because all of the guys out there, there's just nowhere to go. You could leave and then expect, oh, I'm going to go sign with this team, and then they're looking. It's like Kareem Hunt's available, Miles Sanders available. Both Dolphins, 
the uh, the draft. You know, we're seeing three, four, five guys come out of the draft super cheap every year. Why am I going to sign a guy for ten million that has already got three hundred carries a season or three hundred touches a season under his belt? It just doesn't add up. So you think Montgomery so, might be in a so little bit of a tough situation? Every one of these running backs is in a tough situation. I mean, they can't be. I mean, the, the, if anything. How many how many receivers are on? I think individually, you're right. Individually, these guys are in a tough situation. NFL franchises are not no. because they see like the Rolodex of running backs that are available right of now. Of course, so it's like that's why I have a very hard time paying a running back a lot of money. That's why yeah. I have a hard time looking into high running backs in the draft. It just doesn't make sense unless you could get a generational talent. But even still, then what? You I know, mean, yeah. Adrian Peterson. How many how many playoff games did Adrian Peterson win in his career? Not a lot. Not, not a lot. You know Brady played in 48? Yeah. 48 playoff games? Unfortunately. That's insanity. <laughs> that mm-hmm. will never be touched. Um, anyway, rounding out our running backs here I mean, and think, the ESPN I think, list. I think Mahomes is at like 31 already. Yeah, he's been in a lot. He's been in a lot. That's, because, an, that's an exaggeration, but, you know, to the point. Not, not to say that it's going to add up, but just point, think about this also. If you don't get the bye... They added a playoff game. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you don't get the buy, you have to play that extra playoff game. So that will add up over years. Um, all right. Rounding out this with my guy, Tony P. Playmaker, TP, right? You give it to uh, Pollard. He's going to haul it. I don't know. He had – there was some kind of moniker. I messed that one up, but I don't really care. 1,000 yards rushing for the Dallas Cowboys. About 800 and change for Zeke. So they still had their running game. Um, 39 catches, 371 yards. Oh, a total of 12 touchdowns. For Tony Pollard. Now, unfortunately for Tony Pollard, he does the whole breaking of the fibula or whatever he did. Um, did you see the one report that said he tore his fibula? <laughs> I was like, yeah. guess what, guys? They're bones. They break. Um, but anyway, Tony Pollard is a perfect example of, of like the safety net that is the franchise tag. Because now I think the Cowboys are in a completely good position to just franchise this guy, renegotiate Zeke. Get him under. There's a chance. Sounds crazy. But how crazy is it? In 2023, that Tony Pollard makes more money on the annual than Zeke Elliott. Based- no, there's, if, if they fr- – he better. Right. He better. Right. I had a discussion with a colleague yesterday. What would you, pay, what would you restructure it's Zeke cra- to? to? And be I honest, said half. To be honest, it's crazy that he doesn't already. And I understand – you know, the whole dynamic of the Cowboys situation with, with Zeke when it happened. Um, it doesn't matter if it was a good deal or a bad deal. We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about what what's going to happen with Tony Pollard. Right. He probably will get franchise tagged, and he'll probably be happy to because he'll get paid a decent amount, get a chance to show that the injury – because, look, nobody – it's going to be – what people are going to be pointing at – Regardless, he's going to be like, oh, I don't know. I need to see it. It's he's exactly be, what happened to he Gallup. Be, he would be one of the last guys to sign because they're going to want to see him healthy first. And it could play into his into his favor if it does happen that way because then he could kind of handpick a team that needs him and he knows, all right, I'm going to go into the system that I need. Ideally, that for his sake, that's what would, what will happen. I think the Cowboys franchise him. They're, they're, they have a propensity of using their franchise tag. They used it last year on a tight end. Dalton so Schultz, yeah. They will, they will use it when they need to. There's teams that just simply don't use it. Packers, That's, yeah, you don't have Packers to Packers don't it. really use it You don't often. have to. It's just a safety net. Exactly. It buys you time. It buys you time past the deadlines because once there's deadlines and stuff, like teams got to be under the salary cap by like March 15th, I believe. So there's going to be some wheeling and dealing in, in regards to the tag being applied before that time. Um, but, yeah, with Pollard – I think the breaking of his of his ankle, you know, or fibula or whatever. Um, I think that ever, hurts him. If there was ever an injury that Cowboys fans were low key like, that, that happened with Gallup. Gallup was about to leave. I'm, you know, you understand my. I, I mean, look, there, right? nobody roots for injury, but when it comes but to if the he purse, was fully healthy based off the way he played, he would have got stretch, paid. It would have been a lot harder to retain the player. And now it's like, okay, you know, re- rehab over here. Yeah, right. Come on back Give to the us star. Year. Yeah. It's going to be uh, – it'll be interesting to see what they do with Pollard. But, again, I believe in the guy. I think he'll get back to 100%. He'll be fine. Um, so that's the roundabout. Uh, like you mentioned already, there's the Miles Sanders of the world. There's the Kareem Hunts. There's other guys that are out there that have in, um, have their contracts expiring. Yeah, and there's no receivers. There's not a lot. It just lends to the whole structure of the league and the way the, na- the nature of the way GMs try and structure their teams. And build I think their the teams. top receiver – because now I'm going to look it up, but I – Think it's Juju, which is, is like if he's the one that's that's um, Odell, Odell Beckham, correct? But what? 
Yeah. I mean, here, I'll just go by snap count. It's actually, believe it or not, Juju's nowhere near. Well, he's like the fifth or sixth. No, he's like the seventh guy. Mac Hollins, who played 93% of the snaps for the Raiders as a free agent. What does he warrant? Nothing. You know, I don't see. I see pennies, right? Paris Campbell. You never even say his name. He caught a couple you know touchdowns Matt for Matt Ryan. Might be? He might be the, the Alan Lazard replacement. Like a big body. That I was just going to mention Alan Lazard. He played all those snaps. He's out. Um, Noah Brown for the Cowboys. He's probably gone. Marvin Jones, Darius Slayton. And then so, you look at and you look at all the free agent or the receivers that signed the extension going into their fourth season. All yeah. these receivers were locked up. Like McLaurin was the last one. All these receivers that got drafted in that class were locked up going into this year. AJ Green, 35 years old. Right? Yeah. Receivers get paid, running backs don't. Hey, if you're young, Hilton. if you're young and you're on the fence about what position you want to play, line up in the slot, bro. <laughs> Just line up in the slot, catch passes. We all know it. Well, oh, that'll do it for at least uh, this free agency talk uh, because that will ramp up as the season goes. There's going to be a lot of movement. Literally, as soon as that whistle blows in the fourth quarter and there's a champion crown, teams will start going crazy on their salary cap. I read today. Ready, ready for this? Crazy stat. Derek Carr. It's our boy Hawaii Mike posted. Did you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, Derek Carr is due his entire salary in 2023 if he gets hurt at the Pro Bowl. How about that? Well, so guess what? He might be cut before the Pro I, Bowl. I also <laughs> he might have like an NFL helmet, or there's no helmets. It's flex. So like he might not have a team allegiance. I, I don't think that that's that article was entirely true. It means that they can't get it. They can't get somebody to trade for him, but they wouldn't be able to just cut him out, right? They could, but they, they lose money that way. Well, they're going to lose money that way anyway. No, if they trade him, they won't. They'll, 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 that'll be good for them. There's a very, very, very good chance that they're not going to be able to trade him. If they don't trade him, they're going to cut him. They wouldn't owe him his entire salary, right? Correct. There's a, spe there's a specific. I think I worded it wrong. I'm they're curious not, they're if there's an injury, if there's an injury clause where they but, can't cut him because he's rehabbing. That could be a thing. I don't know about the contract. That's what I was. I didn't read the article. Uh, I just surface leveled it and saw the headline. But I was understanding that the Raiders are going to cut him if they can't move him anyway. So if he's injured or not, isn't that the plan? I guess unless we'll see. Uh, unless that's what it is, and I'm missing. But I'm sure I'll hear from Mike about it very soon. We shall, yeah, we shall see about or that. Just go read it. So yeah, do us a favor right now. Follow us on social media right now. Do it. Like, just pause the video. Go follow us. It is on TikTok, Instagram, and of course Twitter at Mojo M O J O. Four letters. Can't miss it. Get on over to the Discord. Join that daily conversation. There's a lot of stuff happening over at Mojo. I don't know if you guys have watched it, but if you guys do Luka. follow, if you do follow social medias, you found out yesterday that the NBA is coming. It's right here. It's coming in February this month. It will drop. Brick. I can't wait to see the stock prices. I can't wait to see the big reveal. It's almost like when Madden comes out every year and you just go to the rosters and make sure they're updated. I can't wait I'm to log write, on to the app. Write down who I think is the top 10 players. I would love that list. I, I would love to see that no, not right the second i'm, I'm saying start it you're gonna start it right now mm -hmm. okay lebron go ahead what's next <laughs> lebron is your tom brady luca is your patrick mahomes john ja morant is your josh allen <laughs> right like guys like that there, there's gonna be uh, a lot of oh, fun no, movement. There's like guys there's movement every night on mojo imagine the liquid props imagine just your stock just do, 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 and you just don't know right oh it's gonna be great it's gonna be madness I'll but tell it's gonna you be what, great uh westbrook's probably got some bank value Russ? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Saw a video of him deny somebody of an autograph yesterday. First I of all, I hate when they do, do that. You, you need to, no. There's guys that are really, really, they stink and they bring kids. That guy might be somebody that Russ knows exactly who he is. That seems it's a, a kid. Yeah. How does he know the kid? So the, how does the kid, how did that kid get there? He walked. What did he, what did he show up outside Russ's limo? He walked. You know, with <laughs> Russ, you're my favorite player. That sounded like he says that to a lot of favorite players. So you that, think that's that what Russ said? Did Russ look at him like, I yeah, wonder all if right. his father's got an eBay account. We'll just say. No, oh, okay. You know? Mm. I, I just. It's tough, man. It's tough. You live it's, that it's life. It's very easy to make somebody look bad in the situation like that where you I, get I, one I second I'm, on camera. I'm well aware. Anyway, do us a favor. Follow us everywhere. We told you about that already. Tomorrow, we'll dive more into plenty of NFL things. We're getting ready for the NBA. So for Dave Sturchio and, of course, Chris Gucci, A5, Anthony, Behind the Glass, 
here at Chop Studios. This has been another episode of the Mojo Market Report. Back here on a Feel Good Friday tomorrow.